We've got three great organizations, a third annual golf tournament, but one great guest. Meter, coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the regional headquarters for Tidelands Bank, located on the corner of Professional Drive and Grissom Parkway here in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on an upcoming golf tournament to benefit the Alzheimer's Association. And we're visiting with the Executive Director of Regency Hospice, Joyce Calabrese. Good morning, Joyce. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much for coming in this morning. Thank you for having Very exciting. me. Exciting. I hope you had a big fourth yesterday. Fantastic, as always. How about those fireworks last night? Where did you watch them? Loud and crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. A yeah. lot going on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A lot red, white, and blue. Of course, mm -hmm. this past weekend, they had the tremendous explosion there. At so much going on at Coastal Federal Field mm -hmm. with the, uh, the city of Myrtle Beach sponsoring their event. And obviously, last night at the Myrtle's Inlet Boat Parade, you know, Bob Hendrick was with us on Monday, and that tremendous uh, display there in Merle's Inlet, mm -hmm. down at the uh, at the Marshwalk area. Right, a yeah. lot going on up and down the Strand. Absolutely, and and those fireworks were fantastic down yeah. at Merle's Inlet. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How about yourself, Joyce? Are you originally from the area? Originally, I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, but mm -hmm. we moved down here in the year 2000, and okay. have loved every minute of it. Is that right? What uh -huh. prompted the move? Um, we had been, been vacationing here yeah. for years and years, just like everybody else who's oh, a transplant yeah. Yeah. from up north. And um, we bought a condo and just vacationed with that condo right. for a while and then just decided it was time. My husband took an early retirement from the city of Boston. Is that and, right? And uh, we moved down. Do you mm -hmm. still have family in the Boston or Rhode Island areas? We do. Um, we still have three sons up in the New Hampshire and Boston area. Right. But luckily, my daughter and her family followed us in 2000. So Is we do right? have a child down here with grandchildren. Yes. So, so you all have four, and one of them here is uh, here in the, on the Strand. Mm -hmm. And nine grandchildren. Oh, come on. Honest to goodness. Yep. Nine grandchildren. Nine. Mm -hmm. the, oh, oldest, my, it, uh, the oldest is going to be 17. Is that right? Uh -huh. How exciting. Well, that keeps yeah. your, uh, of course, last night very busy. Uh, oh, yeah. And all nine of them are down here? No, nope. oh. there are only two here. Okay, and sure. And the other are up north still. We're hoping they'll get down yeah, here. Yeah, you're some hoping point you can convince live. them to make the move uh, uh -huh. south. Yeah. Uh, that's exciting. You get back to Boston often. Uh, we do a couple of times a year. Right, mm -hmm. sure. And we're going back in Labor Day, so. That'll be the yearly trip, I think, yes. for the, this year. Now, I said Calabrese because you said Calabrese, uh -huh. but uh, that's, uh, of course, a, a pronunciation that probably a lot of folks have trouble with. That's Down here, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Italian names are far and few between here, so right. people do have a hard time with it. Um, but Calabrese is the way we say it, sure. but the children up north still say Calabrese. Is that right? Oh, yeah. 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 You've got to have that vowel sound on the end if you want to fit in with the Italian culture up there. You and I have a mutual friend in Ronaldo and his wife, Fran, and of course, yeah. Michael uh, Delgado there uh -huh. at the Italian Restaurant of the Year, Villa right. How do you pronounce their last name? Montrose or is there a special? I say Montrose. Yeah, there we go. You yeah. probably do it correct. Yeah, yeah. You probably so, do it correct. Yeah. That's exciting. But you are. It's the best Italian restaurant. It You're is. at least once a week, if not twice. I think they're celebrating 20-some years recently. It's, uh, I think you're right. It's been north of 20 years. Mm -hmm. I know. He and Fran, of course, Mama Lucia and Claudio, and even the folks even oh, formerly, yeah. his uh, brother-in-law and sister who were working in there, they just worked so hard to set up a great establishment mm -hmm. for many, many, many. And even though Mama is gone and we miss her, right. her doing the Tarantella, dancing around the restaurant, yes. now little Gianna does it, Michael oh, Delgado's yes. daughter. Oh, yes, Michael's daughter. daughter. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Yeah. And Claudio's daughter's in there a good oh, bit. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Rosina uh, and all the other family members and her children yeah. who still have. And Mama Lucia's spirit is definitely there oh, as well. Oh, you're not kidding. It's yeah. wonderful. It's, it's family once you walk in there. It, it's like being in Cheers in Boston. Everybody knows you. That's right. You know, that's it's right. a great place. Those are great words, Joyce. Why, why did you get involved? What prompted your involvement with the Alzheimer's Association? Of course, you're very active there with Regency Hospice as their mm -hmm. executive director. But the Alzheimer's Association, their third annual golf tournament coming up, a right. lot that has to happen to make that event successful. Yeah. What prompted your involvement with Alzheimer's? Well, I'm a nurse, first of all, and I've worked with a lot of Alzheimer patients. 
and I can see how devastating that disease is, not only for the patients, but more for the family. Mm -hmm. um, and my husband's aunt recently died this year after 12 long years of dealing with the Alzheimer's disease. Your so, your, you said your husband died? No, my husband's oh, aunt. Your husband's aunt, yes. excuse me, right, mm -hmm. yes, from Alzheimer's yeah. after 12 years. 12 years, mm. yeah, mm. she was bedridden for probably 10 of those years didn't recognize even her son coming in the family, you know, mm. to visit. Um, and I was very close with her. She and I used to go to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston mm. one weekend a month and have lunch, you know, just a girl's time mm -hmm. out. And mm -hmm. so it was really hard on me also, mm -hmm. as well as the rest of the family. I bet, I bet. So I've just got this desire to help the Alzheimer's Association to hopefully find a cure someday or shorten, um, or at least not shorten, but at least um, lessen the symptoms right. of Alzheimer's through their research with medications. Share with viewers who may not be totally familiar with Alzheimer's mm. and all of its uh, terrible, debilitating aspects of the disease, a little bit about the disease. Alzheimer's is a progressive brain disease. Um, there are plaques that actually uh, take presence in the brain so that the cells that where the plaques are die. Mm. And so the Alzheimer victim actually loses the ability to walk, to talk. They forget how to swallow. Mm. Um, they forget how to toilet themselves. It, it's, they forget everything. Mm. Um, it's just horrific, as I said. And eventually they become bed bound. Mm -hmm. And there are um, some personality disorders, too, that the patients may exhibit um, with hallucinations or delusions or aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's where the families just don't understand. And it's, you know, it's so hard for them to accept the disease and the behaviors of the person that they've loved for so many years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now here this person doesn't even remember their name or who they are. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a very bad disease. And unfortunately, you know, the, the research that's been done hasn't found a cure after all of these years. However, I just heard that one of the pharmaceutical companies is coming out with a new medication, and it's in patch form. Because really? a lot of these patients, as I said, can't swallow, right. or they forget to take their pills. So if they have the patch on, at least they're getting the medication into their bloodstream. And the patch might be able to do what? It may be able to... Um, lengthen their, their normal lifestyle mm -hmm. so that the plaques aren't forming as quickly as they had been. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that this is passed by the FDA and it's out on the market for mm -hmm. use within the next couple of years. That is tremendous. Oh, that I can hope make so. a world of difference. Oh, world right. of difference. Looking forward to it. How many folks, of course, you know the bulk of our viewers in the PD in southeastern North Carolina, but here along the Strand, mm -hmm. let's say here along the Strand, how many folks are actually impacted? Do you have any any idea, general numbers of the folks impacted? Not not only the families, but right. directly folks who may have Alzheimer's. There are approximately five thousand patients or people diagnosed with Alzheimer's on the Grand Strand, no. according to the Alzheimer's Association of South Carolina. They're terrible figures. It is. It's mm. terrible. And that's the, the patients who are diagnosed. There are many more who are undiagnosed, mm. and that number we don't know. Mm. Um, when, once you start getting Alzheimer's and your memory loss, these people know how to compensate for that memory loss. So you, typically, you don't even realize that your mom or your dad or whoever is exhibiting symptoms of early stages of Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mean, people are so afraid to find out that they do have Alzheimer's, right, so sure. they tend not to go to the doctor to get diagnosed. Mm -hmm. That's it's terrible. very sad. And there's five million people approximately in the United States alone that have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Five million. Five million. 4.9 million of that five are over the age of 65. That is, that is tragic, Joyce. Of yeah. course, we've heard some of the big names recently, some of the folks that have died in the recent term or mm -hmm. are definitely impacted with it. Just to jog folks' recollection, who are some of those folks? Wasn't Ronald Reagan one of those who uh, was severely impacted and obviously lost his life later? Exactly. And there are so many others. Yeah, and sure, most names. of these people die because of aspiration pneumonia. Mm -hmm. What happens is they forget how to swallow, and instead of the food and liquid going into their stomach, 
it goes into their lungs. Mm. And mm. typically, that's the cause of death with most of the people who have Alzheimer's. That's fascinating. Yeah. Joyce, for a lot of viewers may need to get off to work now or get family out of the house. What's the best number for someone to call to learn about the upcoming golf tournament? Uh, is that the 651 number you gave me earlier? Yes, people can call me at Regency Hospice at 651-2335. Okay. okay. The tournament is July 14th, which is a Saturday. Right. And it's at River Oaks Golf Plantation, which is just over the, uh, the waterway bridge, off 501. Great. Um, it's a 7.30 a.m. registration and 8.30 shotgun start with a captain's scramble, captain's choice scramble. Um, and there's plenty of food and drink and adult beverages all Good. day, starting yes. with uh, the morning, with Danish and probably mimosas or Bloody Marys. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. enough. And um, because it'll probably be a very hot day, being July 14th, there'll be plenty of water out there right. and soda sure. and beer. We've got two kegs being donated, as mm. well as canned beer that we'll be carting around the course for everybody. That's tremendous. And it's going to be a great time, lots of fun. And again, folks could call that same number. If they, they can call that more, number or my, yes, or my cell phone, which is 333-2868. Okay. Great, 333-2868. Mm -hmm. Well, we will surely make sure and get the uh, 651 number here up on the screen. 333-2868. Two eight six eight. Sorry, two eight six eight. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Six five one twenty three thirty five right. to learn more. And of course, there are a lot of other fundraising events during the year for the Alzheimer's Association. What are some of those other events that viewers may or may not have heard of mm -hmm. that they, if they can't be out on Saturday, July fourteenth, or if they're not a golfer and they just want to support? Uh, the, the fight to find a cure uh, for Alzheimer's. Uh, what are some of the other events during the year they can get involved well, in? Well, our signature event with the Alzheimer's is the Memory Walk. Oh, right, sure. And um, that's going to be held at Broadway at the Beach on September 29th. That's also a Saturday. And it's 9 o'clock registration and 10 o'clock for the walk. And people don't have to walk. That's a misnomer. Just because it's called a walk, you don't mm -hmm. have to. We have lots of the um, residents coming from assisted living facilities who will be there in their wheelchairs. And we plenty of nurses around also right, sure. to take care of them Great. just in case. But that's our signature event. Um, and we'll have some local celebrities there, just as we do at the golf tournament. Great. Yeah. And who then, are some of those for oh, viewers who may hear on a Thursday morning and get excited? With, uh, who are some of those local celebrities? Who, well, Michael Delgado is going to be there. He is there. a celebrity. Absolutely. The, uh, the accordionist at uh, uh -huh. Dormana. He's actually playing golf in the foursome at Good. our golf tournament. Great. And at the Alzheimer's walk, he's going to be roving through all the people with his accordion. Oh, you're kidding. For entertainment. Well, that's a celebrity yeah. in and of himself. Uh -huh. That's great. Also with the walk, walk we have the... Um, some uh, not to put you on the spot about those celebrities I'm sorry yeah, I'm so, sorry. As we That's think about okay. there's so many great celebrities in the area and the right. fact that they find the time to give oh, it yeah. up to support groups like the Alzheimer's Association well, or, Rob Napier the uh, fiddle player at the Alabama theater he's uh -huh. also in one of our foursomes right um, so we're looking forward to having him sure, he absolutely. plays frequently at River Oaks Golf Plantation and he's a big supporter so we're Lucky to have him there. And the there. folks there at River Oaks that clearly care a lot to Dan Gray and so many others who Ab care a lot yes. about Alzheimer's and want to work hard mm -hmm. to find a cure as well. Well, the GM there, uh, Chris Hawk at Bye. River Oaks, his grandmother has Alzheimer's, mm. so he always supports us to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. And of course, my husband works there too. So oh, good. We, oh, yes. Even better, yes. Joyce. We have a good in there. Good thing, uh -huh. very definitely. What about some of the uh, events that will be occurring? Uh, did, did I see that you all have some raffles that day? Oh, my goodness. Nike Golf has donated some Nike irons and Nike um, woods. Is and that, that right? will be the grand prize in the raffles. And so many local businesses have donated um, gift certificates right. and goods. Um, so there will be lots of great prizes. Mm -hmm. Tremendous, of course. Yeah. Those kind of donations when you see folks stepping up to the plate to, uh, to really step out. And again, uh, for folks who want to sign up, 651-2335 exactly. or calling you at 333-2868. That's good, good, right. good. You know, when we think about uh, where those dollars go or how someone feels they can make an impact, mm -hmm. uh, 
sometimes they feel like, oh, this money's going to go to administrative costs. Right. It's not really going to go make a difference on finding a cure. Where will the dollars go that are raised at the golf tournament on the 14th? Most of the money stays here in the state, especially Good. especially to support our Surfside Beach office. Okay. I'm not sure if your viewers know, but we do have a local office no, here. No, sure. And it's manned by Linda Sello, who does all of these support groups in the area, mm -hmm. helping the caregivers deal with the devastation of the disease. Um, 82 cents on the dollar, 82 cents of every dollar stays with the state. The rest of it goes to research. Is that right? Research to fight the disease. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. That's tremendous. Well, those dollars clearly need to be found one way or another. And again, if a viewer cannot uh, be at the golf tournament next Saturday, the 14th, mm -hmm. if they right. can't be there on the 14th, they could surely give you a call or they could call mm -hmm. the uh, Alzheimer's Association office down there yes. uh -huh. in, uh, in Surfside Beach. And we're looking for more walkers to participate in the memory walk. Mm -hmm. Is there a good website if viewers were interested in possibly attending, uh, going online to learn more about mm -hmm. Alzheimer's Association? The National Alzheimer's Association is www.alz.org. Okay. And the local South Carolina is www.alzsc.org okay, and good. both of them have a wealth of information mm -hmm. um, not only about the disease but for caregivers and how to cope sure sure mm -hmm. well of course your position as executive director of Regency Hospice you probably stay pretty active with uh, with groups like the Alzheimer's mm -hmm. Association what are some of the reasons that Regency is involved with Alzheimer's we want to be able to give back to the community and being involved with charitable organizations mm -hmm. it's just our way of, of giving back mm -hmm. and um, many of our patients have Alzheimer's. Is that right? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. people, a lot of people don't realize that Alzheimer's is an end of state, oops, is a life-threatening illness mm -hmm. and does qualify for hospice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're very involved. That's tremendous. Mm -hmm. and of course, finding a way to give back, that's a great organization. What, are there some other organizations that you've gotten into either personally or indirectly mm -hmm. to find a way to, to give back, Joyce? Grace Ministries, Grace is an acronym for Gracefully Aging with Community Encouragement. Mm. And this organization was started by the former ombudsman of the county, Mary Lou Brown. Mm -hmm. And the reason the organization exists is to help seniors who to remain in their homes and as independent as possible for as long as possible through the use of volunteers mm -hmm. and coordinating other community and federal state agencies to help these patients. Great, good. Mm -hmm. So I sit on the board of that organization too. Very worthwhile cause. And it's been around for how long? Uh, just about a year. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Virtually a, a new, a new organization is. set up. They're a nonprofit organization. It's nonprofit, and we just heard from the United Way that we, they are giving us some funds as mm -hmm. seed money, so mm -hmm. that's exciting. You know, when we think about hospice, I bet a lot of folks probably don't have a full understanding of hospice. Mm -hmm. What exactly is hospice, Joyce? A lot of people are very scared just with the word hospice. They think it's the grim reaper around the corner, you know, waiting to get them three mm -hmm. days later, and that's not the case. Hospice is a service that's available to anyone who's got a life-threatening illness, and such as Alzheimer's, heart disease, lung disease, and of course cancer. Um, it offers nursing services, aid services, volunteers, chaplain to give spiritual support and mm. social work services and each of those disciplines has a different function just think if you had your your grandfather dying mm. can no longer get out of the house the doctor wants to see him because there may be a, a medication change that's necessary mm -hmm. the nurse in hospice would be able to assist and assess the patient and then be the eyes and ears for the doctor so that the patient can stay at home and yet still get all of the medical support that they need from their physician. Mm -hmm. um, the aides would go in to help with bathing and homemaking because many times these patients get so debilitated that they can no longer bathe themselves and they need assistance. Mm -hmm. And the caregivers, whoever they are, the spouses, daughters and sons, they, it's 
a very stressful time for them oh, yeah. and you know they need the help so hospice offers them all the spiritual physical uh, and emotional help that we can give to them. Mm -hmm. Is there just the one hospice on the Strand, mm -hmm. Regency Hospice, is that the only one around? No, there are many hospices on the Grand Strand. Um, originally there were two or three and now there's about 12 or 13. Is that right? Is uh -huh. there anything that really differentiates a, a Regency from the others? I feel Regency is different because of the staff that we have. First of all, I believe in celebrating staff. Mm -hmm. um, just making sure that they feel worthwhile, um, that we appreciate them and we value them. And in turn, the staff is going to be compassionate and more caring with the patients. Mm. We're a family of staff, not just a team. Well, team is important, but being a family and helping each other is mm -hmm. very important. Um, we've also had a physician here on the Grand Strand in his own handwriting send me a thank you note for taking care of his patients. Really? Mm. As you can guess, I framed it and it's hanging on the conference room oh, wall. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the community involvement, as we've talked about, mm -hmm. we're very big into the charitable organizations and giving back. Um, I've had a staff person who worked with me in the year 2000 at another organization find me so she could work with me. So mm. she's now on staff. That's tremendous. It is. It really is. I can also boast that we have a pharmacist on staff. Um, not many hospices do have that staff person. Mm -hmm. And her role is to make sure that all the patients are getting the right medications, mm -hmm. watching for side effects, interactions, calling the physician if mm -hmm. there are any questions or concerned about the medications that the mm -hmm. patient's getting. Speaking of the patients, who, who actually is eligible for hospice? Joyce, you may have answered that earlier, but if mm -hmm. not, uh, who's eligible for hospice? Well, as I said, anyone with a life-threatening illness. Okay. But you do have to have a doctor's order, and anyone can call us with a referral, even mm -hmm. the patient or the family. And then it's just a phone call away. We will call the doctor and check if they want hospice, and okay. we will go and evaluate. Good. We just mm -hmm. got a couple of minutes. You know, we think about clearly cost may be an issue that a lot of uh -huh. folks face. Uh, you highlighted many of the benefits just a minute ago. Some of the costs that someone needs to be thinking about for our viewers who may be at home and not familiar with what right. the cost would be to them and their family. Many insurances cover hospice. Medicare Part A is the insurance that most of our patients have and it covers a hundred percent. Is that right? A hundred percent. It covers all of the, the staff visits, medications, even adult diapers, medical supplies, and all of the medical equipment needed. So that's a big financial advantage for the families also. Oh yeah, oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think you highlighted earlier that clearly hospice is not the grim reaper. Right. It's not uh, hope doesn't need to be given up. No. Is there a length of time that a hospice is normally involved? Do you all step in when there is some level of uh, uh, some, just when do you all step in? Medicare has regulations and their regulation states that a person with a life-threatening illness that lasts six months or longer if the disease runs its normal course is eligible mm -hmm. now the phrase there that you have to be concerned about is if the disease runs its normal course mm -hmm. because not everybody is going to live six months or less right, right. Um, so thank goodness they put that clause there because before hospice was only for cancer patients and it was for those who had just six months or less. Mm -hmm. But now we've had patients on service for longer than six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. How could viewers, of course, I know you're involved in so many groups and, and you either directly or through Regency have found a way to get involved. We, I wish we had more time to talk about Grace Ministries because mm -hmm. clearly they're doing some tremendous things. But what are some of the ways that viewers can get more involved or learn more about Grace Ministries uh, if they uh, wanted to tune in to Grace? Mm -hmm. Grace also has a website, and it's www.gracefullyaging.org. Okay, Grace. And they can also call me. I'm vice president on the board, so hopefully Great. I can answer all of their questions. Absolutely. So your mm -hmm. service, if you weren't actively serving as a volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association, Joyce, or even serving, as you just shared with us, as vice president of Grace Ministries, what do you think you'd be doing? Golly, just running <laughs> Regency Hospice alone is, mm -hmm. I'm sure, a, a big undertaking there. It is, but it's fun. It really is fun. I wouldn't be doing any of these if it wasn't tickling my heartstrings and 
that's what it's all about, is living life to the fullest and giving back. So that's those, what I do. Those are great words. And spending time with your nine grandchildren. <laughs> yes, absolutely. absolutely. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Well, thank you for having me. Definitely. I appreciate it. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Joyce Calabrese coming up next. Why does this number work so well? Because we're talking about three, three special organizations. We've got Grace Ministries, Regency Hospice, and of course the Alzheimer's Association. What's that number? 843-333-2868. Take the time to write it down, 333-2868. We're talking about a golf tournament nine days away. It's Saturday, July 14th. Registration's at 730. The uh, shotgun starts at 8.30. It's Captain's Choice, $65 per person. We were asking Joy so many questions about hospice and about Grace Ministries and Alzheimer's. We didn't have a chance to find out. $65 per person. They've still got a couple of slots available. We've got a call. Pick up the phone, 843-333-2868. There's also a couple of whole sponsorships available, but you've got to pick up the phone. And if you want to learn more about Regency Hospice, you can go online to regencyhospice.com or of course you can uh, give her a call at 333-2868 or also Grace Ministries. A lot happening with these three tremendous organizations. Pick up the phone, get out there, River Oaks uh, Plantation, Saturday, July 14th.